So let's continue. So what do we next have? We need to have a name. And this is going to be our name is equal to name. And you look at this and go, wait, why are you doing this? And I'll explain why. And you go, player ID is equal to number of players. Just save like an extra requirement. And then player team, or yeah, we add player team, yeah, is equal to team. And then we add number of players plus plus. Go plus or equal to one. That would work two or whatever, but plus plus is the same kind of thing. Same for minus minus. If you're using modern develop and you wanna know how I kind of format it like that, you go tools. If you're actually also lagging, go under tools, admin, admin manager, turn off both of these and you can just turn off like ones you don't use like this one it's kind of hard to know which ones you don't use so I suggest just to turn off these ones because they don't really this is the main one this will lag you like crazy um, so let's turn that one off and then to get the little shortcut you go tools options key bindings format that and then you enter your binding press apply it press ok and there you go so we got so this is our constructor so whenever we want to build a player whenever we want to build this object or build an instance of this whenever we want to build one of these we got to have a few things we got to have a name and we got to have a team and then we're going to build the player and we're going to clear the stats so this will basically just remove every key remove every variable so we literally have no stats nothing whatsoever and then we're going to populate it it's going to add it Actually, I don't need to do this. No, I do. Kills with zero. So we have zero kills to add. And we want to have zero deaths. And we also want to have zero assists. But we also want to have a few other things. All these other things, we have zero score zero minions and zero buildings minions zero and then we want to add score and then we want to add a finally a buildings which is like Maybe you got like some towers or to defend your base or something, and you know, so you can track. Okay, this guy's destroyed five buildings. This guy's destroyed one, so on. And we're gonna say if your team is equal to blue, and the double equal sign means you're comparing sign, where the one equal sign is you're setting it. All right? You're saying this is equal to this. So you can't say if team equals this, and it's like well. What? what are you asking? You asked me to equal sign. You also asked me to set sign. It's like, what? Where is this? Well, we're checking out our game object or player object. Which is equal to a game object cast of doing stair shade scores. Now I'm gonna write this, add this little thing in. But what this is, and we'll actually do the rest. We just go put prefab, oh, player object. The name is equal to name, and player object dot transform dot set parent as scores dot parent b. So I'll, I'll write these right now and do all that stuff, but basically this is a cast. So what you're saying is you're building an object. Essentially it clones an object. So this is actually an object. And this is a parent. Well, this is still an object, but uh, it's a parent and child system. And essentially this is a child to this, which is a child to this, which is a child to this, which is a child to this. And obviously this is a parent to this parent. So we're just kind of putting them under here, and every time we put them under here, it will organize them downwards. 
So we'll have to look at that. So we're going to have to build a few things. We're going to have to build a public static board manager called scores. And we're going to have to build a, this is a little trick I'll show you. It's really cool. I'm going to have to build a transform called current R, current B, and a public game object um, prefab R, prefab B. So what this is, is we could copy, so what we could actually write is we could actually do the same thing, you know, game object prefab B, like that, you know, same thing as R. But if, if you're going to make it the exact same variable, then you can just do that comma, and it will just say this one's one and this one's one. So it's just like a nice, nice little trick they put in there just to make it easier, because sometimes you want to create like maybe 10 of them. For example, let's say I want to create X and Y. Public int x. Normally you'd have to do it this way. Oh, it's really stuffed up this time. Oh, because this. And public int y. That's normally how you'd have to do it, but thanks to this, you can just do that, and that saves your line or so. So this is kind of for those little things that I use them for quite a bit. I know as much as I probably should, but I do use them. So and then we also want to do something else, which is going to be under awake, which is a function, so we're actually doing a function now. Uh, void awake, and void, essentially a function returns something. So you ask a function to do something, but okay, can you give me back something? And a void function gives you back nothing. So you don't need to ask for anything. So normally you'd say, okay, well, can you give me a number? And it would give you a number, and you'd have to use that number somewhere, where void you don't, so they're good. This is basically saying scores is equal to this. So this is just a nice little trick that will mean that you don't have to do all the hassle that a lot of people have to do with a lot of the annoying little issues with the program. We want to start. We also want to initialize. Initialize. And I write that. This is a function. I'll write in a second. So we'll format this everything. So everything like makes tidy up and then we were basically done for that bit and this obviously will be cut up quite a bit I think it's done okay so now we're gonna have to talk about lists and lists are the exact same as rows there's no difference um, we'll, we'll just tell you what happens when I use that but an arrayist list is under generic it's used for generic and it's a um, well, how do I explain it? It's like a. I'm trying to think of how I'd explain it. Well, basically, it's just a, a array that's dynamic, so I can add ten to it, and then I can move ten, and then I can add another five, and then I can move five. So if I have an array, I've said how big that is. I've said it's a maximum of ten things in that array. Where lists, you don't have to say how big they are. They're infinite. Oh, well, lists are infinite. If I said arrays are infinite, I meant lists. Lists are very hard to move things from, but they're not too bad. So we're having a list of players, or player. I'll explain about this a bit more in a second. And then we want to... I think we're done. Here we are, basically. That's, that was a lot quicker than I thought. We're basically done. You may look at this and go, what, what? There's not a lot of stuff done. Oh, we haven't done the initialize, that's why. I was like, there's something wrong here. But we, that's because we haven't done the in initialize, which is the big one. It's not as big as player, which is why I said this is a little bigger than I thought it would be. I thought it'd be like this big, literally, and that'd be everything. But it turned out a bit bigger, but it's still fine. It looks okay. So what we want to do is we have a text array of text. These are all, and let's see how big our text array is, or four. It's going to say our text array is a maximum of four things in it, which is what it's just talking about. And it's just going to hold text components, like 
this. This is a text component, so it's this. And then we're going to actually start doing some stuff with it. So we're going to use an encoder for each loop. Do we even use four loops in this? No, we do not use four loops. We use for each. Okay. So this is pretty easy to understand. And I'll just write this and then you can see. So what we're saying is we're saying for each or for every player. So for every player that you have in players, do something with that player. So you maybe understand what I'm saying is that you're going for every single player. So you're saying player zero, player one, player two, player three, and you're saying, okay, do this on each one. And we're just gonna do a simple thing if play dot stats dot contains key kills then do say then p dot stats dot add kills zero this way it means that is if something has gone wrong and you've lost your key in the game for some, for some reason then it will just kind of um, re reset it and do stuff like that. So it's just, this is not really needed and it's kind of just weird but I like having stuff like this in here so if somehow there's some weird interaction and you create a counter and somehow you create a counter through other means and he doesn't have any stats for example if um, I'll show you in a second, but in the list, I can do it inside the editor. So instead of having um, to create a character through here, so if I create a character through the editor, I don't do all this stuff. I don't have to give him a name. I don't have to give him a team. You know, I just create one. So it means that he won't have a kills. He won't have all these things. So this is just kind of creating all this stuff. Creating. What the freak? Okay. Um, and then we want minions. Well, we still got one more. And then we got score. And then we got buildings. Is it, it doesn't matter how you spell these because they have to always match up to every other spelling of it in the thing. But it doesn't matter too, too much. Because it normally will be like, oh, why isn't it working? Because of that. Well, I've stuffed up on my on my piece of code. I stuffed this up a bit. I had all these four loops at all these like endings at the end, instead of ending them here, which would have been a really big problem. I, I would be stuck for ages. So I, I got found glad I found that. So we got player object dot get components components in children. Uh, we got like this. So what we're doing is we want to get there. how we just finish it, then we can talk about it. So there's something called a component, and this is a component. This is a component, and all these things are components. So this is, but this is the main component we're talking about right now. So this is a component, and so is this. This game object here is a component, but this is. And oh, I don't really have much else. You know, obviously, image is a component. Yeah, you know, much else can show you what is a component. So, when what we're doing is beginning every component in the children. And I'll show you why. Um, I wonder how long this is going for. 30 minutes. Okay, I can cut this up in two bits. That's pretty fine. Um, let's build one. So, we can put this under red. Perhaps, doesn't really matter. And we want a layer element. And we want to make sure the preferred width. Uh, the preferred height, sorry, is zero, and the preferred height is maybe forty, like that. And then inside here, we actually want to have data, so we want to have this called prefab. Ah, uh, and then inside this, we actually want to have text. We're going to call this 
I think we're gonna yeah once I read just decide to put this in here because it'll make this make a little more sense apparently it does though it doesn't so what we'll do is we put this under R and then we'll drag this under here and then we can kind of line this up and then we will call this uh, name and then we can do another one and we call this score why not and then we can do another one call this kills another one call this deaths another one call this assists another one call this minions and finally another one call this buildings could do it in a different way so they kind of uh, just kind of a copy of each other but I kind of like them both staying on each side and working backwards I probably will change it <laughs> So score can come back here, which is kind of annoying. And then we can have depth, I mean kill, sorry. Line of kills. And then we can call it kills. Of course, deaths. And line this one up with deaths. And then call this assists. Of course, minions. Line this one up with minions. And then line this one up with assists. And line this one up with buildings. And then we can just pop all these things down here. Make them all. And then make them all middle. Middle. I don't know why I gave the main text, so this one's going to be a bit shorter. Uh, we'll push it back here, and we'll just kind of make it the same size, then we can push it back here. And we can make all this text nothing. Just because we'll fill it with actual data in a second. So that's it, basically. And then we just get the prefab and we copy it. And obviously, as you see, it does that, but it's fine. And then we just move it to blue. And then we just got all these things. So the name now goes here. Score goes over here. Let's push all these back into like maybe the blue side. This and we can have name match up. Score match up. Kills match up. Let's match up. Match that up and then assist can obviously match up too. And find the buildings over here which can match up and score is stuffed up a bit so we can just match this up. And we can just do this, which is kind of pretty good, and then pop this into here for data and call this and call this blue. Drop blue down here, drop red down here delete both of them and now we have prefabs and these are just drawings of objects let's do design with uh, initialize where it is so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we got our text properly here so we actually got to bring this one back and we got to make sure these are the exact same in order 